Creativity is you either have it or you don't. You know, I'm not sure you can, you can learn it. You can go to all these art schools and all of this and that. I think creativity is something that you have to just be open to and let things just emerge. If, if you're sort of eyes wide open and see things around you, go sit on a park bench, watch people pass by, go to places, I think creativity can emerge, but I don't think it's something that is taught. How did I end up at Interview Magazine? Uh, Dotson Rader, the sort of political writer of the time, I was friends with him and he took me to a big uh, Warhol exhibition at the Whitney Museum. And that's when I first met Warhol. Then I had an exhibition at 492 Broadway at a gallery and the exhibition was called Step On It. And I thought, uh, what I did is I, the photos, I put all the photos on the ground and we on, on the floor of the gallery and we covered it in plexiglass. Uh, and my idea was when you go to photo galleries or uh, people's heads are always this one way and looking around and I wanted to manipulate the viewers, make them move up and down, move a little bit. And so I asked Warhol to come, he couldn't make it. He sent Bob Colicello. Bob loved the show. And then he said, why don't you come over to the factory and, and Meet, a, meet Andy at the factory and maybe take some pictures for an interview. And that's how I actually ended up at the factory and ultimately working at Interview Magazine. At Interview Magazine at the time, they weren't really shooting assignments. It's sort of like, you know, we decide on somebody and they would see if it's a good fit. It was always not just a photographer in the subject matter. It was like, is this a good fit for Mako's to photograph Peter Firth? It was like, let's match up the right people with the right people. How did Man Ray and Warhol work together in my career? Uh, his, Man Ray's philosophy, which he gave to me, was um, go by your first impressions, your gut feelings, because usually they're the best. Because by the, by the time you've looked at it two or three times, that analytical part of one's, the way one works, kicks in and then you start to question some of your reports. I mean, that's why I always, I have everything, whether it's the scrap photos from uh, working on my pictures in the dark room, or I never threw or throw anything out because what I thought was maybe insignificant or not important 15 years ago suddenly is gorgeous and genius and I love it now. So, you know, Warhol collaborated with Basquiat, Keith Haring, Clemente, and we collaborated. And I'd have to say the first time we collaborated, of course, the famous one is, is Altered Image. But our first collaboration was when the Sony Corporation came to Andy at the factory and they wanted him to be a spokesperson for a Sony something. It was a TV or a Betamax machine. And then we realized that Andy really didn't have a portfolio of pictures of him modeling to help promote that career. Because Andy had a film career, a painter's career, an uh, author's career, but he never had a modeling career. And so I would say our first collaboration was him as a model. And then if you see the pictures, and he's quite awkward in it. And uh, Andy was a painter. Make sure you look at his hands in these pictures because he was quite awkward through the whole thing. When I do portraits of people, I prefer to let themselves show themselves to me. Uh, I don't really want to change them or take them to somewhere else they're uncomfortable with. It's, I always think, for me, I get the best results when I let the subject matter be themselves in front of me. So, uh, you know, really to talk about the altered image, um, that was a collaboration that we both thought would work for both of us. Um, a lot of some of the people at the factory didn't want us to do that because they thought that would ruin Andy's uh, portrait career. But it was five different wigs, um, 365 different pictures. Uh, Halston actually asked us if we wanted to borrow a dress. We said no, which in retrospect, we should have done that too. But at the time, <clears throat> there was this idea of altering one's image. It's sort of like, you know, 
everybody has their idea of drag. The fireman, when he's during the daytime, he's wearing his fireman drag. During the day, the police officer is wearing the police officer drag. So with, uh, it was this idea of image, the way that Cindy Sherman plays with image. And we thought if we're gonna do something like this, let's find some historical context so that there is somewhere to draw this from. And of course the obvious one was uh, Man Ray's collaboration with Marcel Duchamp. And Man Ray did a series called Rose de la Vie, which was where that was the jumping off point for our work. I love the question. What's the biggest misconception about me and my work? That it's overpriced? <laughs>